Hello everybody and welcome to part four of data analysis with Python and Pandas. In this tutorial what we're going to be doing is beginning to build our data set for our real estate analysis. So to start uh, we're going to come over here to Quandle and now you will need to sign up make an account. You don't actually need to at this point but by the next video you will. And the code's going to include code that will require an account as well as um, we're going to need the Quandle module. So to get the Quandle module, you can either install it from you know their website, or again, you can go pip install Quandle. Simple as that. Once you have Quandle, you're able to use Quandle.get, and you can get and then use a little ticker, and boom, you're done. So let's say we're looking for um, housing price index. We search. We wait. And we get this Freddie Mac database. And then in here, you can already see we've got house price index for Alaska, Alabama, Arkansas, and so on. So we can click more from this database. And this is the housing price index basically for every state at first, anyways. And then there's some other information here, too. Now, what if we wanted to grab the housing price index for every single state? Because the idea is that uh, the housing markets are probably all going to follow each other. Okay, so. Um, there might be some divergence, and then there might be some laggards, and there might be some uh, leaders, right? But what ends up happening is every time there's any divergence, as far as at least directionally uh, we're concerned, we can almost pretty much promise that we're going to get back to the mean, okay, of, of the housing price in, uh, index. So the idea first is to confirm that hypothesis. So the hypothesis is that all housing markets follow the same path. They might have a different um, magnitude of that path, right? So if, if one market goes up, they all go up. Or if most markets go up, a specific market is going to go up. Maybe not by the same degree, but it's going to have to go up. So here we're saying they're definitely at least correlated to some degree, but we need to be able to test that and find out if that's even true. We believe that to be true, but we want to make sure. So we want to pull every single um, housing price index, but we're not going to go through here by hand, click Alaska download, click Alabama download. And then we're also, you know, right now fit, we've got a list of 50 states that we would need to use, and I mean we could type them all out by hand, but that's going to be kind of annoying. So instead what we're going to do is like, let's click Alaska. And we can already see up here, the it's HPIAK, but we can also see the Quandle code over here, FMAC HPIAK, and you could also click on Python and get the Quandle.get. Now, if we scroll down, the other thing you'll note uh, that we'll kind of show later on, though, is like, let's say you don't want all the way back to 1975, like you could modify this to be uh, 1999, okay? And then when you go to now that you've changed that, when you go to click Python, it's going to add that trim, uh, and that makes the data that it's returned to you start at 1999, which is pretty nifty. Anyway, so we know this is the Quandle code, and what we want to do is find a list of the United States and just automatically generate this Quandle code, uh, rather than typing it out by hand, like all the 50 states. So, uh, the first step, we're going to come over here, and we're going to go ahead and first import Quandle. That's the Quandle module that we had uh, had you install right away. And then, of course, import pandas as PD. Now, when you make an account on Quandle, you can go to your um, you know your little name, uh, and then go to API or something like that, and it'll have your API key there. You can write your API key in your script. I'm just not going to because I don't want everybody to use my key. So I'm just going to have API key equals open, and I've put a little file in here called Quandle API key.txt. The intention to read, and then dot read, and now that's my API key. Again, you don't need to do that if you don't want to. Next, I'm going to say df equals Quandle.get. And we can throw in basically this right here. So we could say get fmac hpi for Alaska. And then uh, we'll do, um, I, what, I always thought AK was for Arkansas, but I guess I'm wrong. Maybe it's AR for Arkansas. Anyway, 
<laughs> Moving on. Auth token equals API key. And uh, that's that. Then we can print df.head. And we'll get a returned data frame in a moment. Now you'll see uh, that we have the date here, and it's already being treated as the index, which is pretty nifty. If you're using the Quandle uh, module, you'll have um, the automatic assignment there of the index. Now I'm going to close out of this, and now what we want is the uh, a list of the 50 states. So let's just do um, 50 USA states abbreviations or something like this. Um, and then, yeah, so you come over here, lit 50 U.S. states abbreviations, and eventually you find the Wikipedia page. So we would click on that, and we're kind of like looking around, and here we go. We've got quite a few, um, looking, is this, I'm trying to think if this is the one that I actually used, list of, this one's U.S. state abbreviations, but the one I was looking for is actually just the U.S. states. So let's do, like, let's do U.S., 50 U.S. states. I want that simple, let's see, maybe this is it. Yeah, there we go. So a list of U.S. states, and it's this nice table with the abbreviations in it. Easy. Uh, yeah, AR for Arkansas. I had to figure that one out. Anyway, <laughs> moving this over. So what we want to do is we want to read the table from here. So we could use Python and regular expressions and split out this table, or we could use something like Beautiful Soup or something, but we want a table, and this is a pandas tutorial. And we actually happen to have read HTML, so let's do it. So moving this over, we're going to say 50 states equals pd.read underscore HTML. And we want to read this link. Copy that over here. Paste. Now, when you read HTML, this puts the information into a list of data frames. Even though there's only one table, it's going to make like multiple attempts at reading this table. It may also read this little list here, and it'll probably read this kind of table here. So you think like, oh, there's only one table here. I promise, there's more than one table, and it's going to find it. So <laughs> 50 states will be a list of data frames. Okay, so we can at first print 50 states. And I'm going to go ahead and comment the, these two lines out. We don't need those two lines. So let's save and run that real quick. Yeah, so there you go. You got a bunch of junk in here. We can pretty much deduce that each, like, uh, you know, this right here, this is the beginning of a list. You see the square brackets. Then you've got data frame one would be here. And then data frame number two and so on. So data frame one would have the index value of a zero. So it looks like the first data frame is the one that we want. That's index zero. So we can close out of this, and we can say, instead of 50 states, we can say we want 50 states zero, right? So at the moment, 50 states alone, and in fact, let's just do this. Let's say this, this is a list. Then copy that, paste, uh, 50 states zero, this is a data frame, right? So now we're going to print 50 state zero. Now 50 state zero is a data frame of its own. And then what are we looking for? Well, it turns out we're looking for column zero. So that's a column which will output to us basically a series. So let's copy this, paste, and again, so now we want column zero. So zero, this is a column. Fantastic. And now, of column zero, we want everything from element one onward, because element zero is abbreviation, or, you know, index zero is abbreviation. So, what do we do now? Now, we say for ABBV, for abbreviation, um, what do we want to do? In 50 states, zero, zero, one colon. We are going to print. And we're going to just print it out just to see that we got it right. fmac slash hpi underscore plus string version. Should already be a string, but just in case. ABBV. 
Okay. So now, save and run that. And here are all of the, basically, uh, I don't know what to call it, ticker or whatever, the API name that we want to query for, right? So Alabama, Alaska, Arizona, Arkansas, California, Colorado, Connecticut, and so on, all the way down the list. So now we've got that. Now all we need to do is create new data frames based on these and begin kind of adding them together. So we've got a lot of stuff that we're actually going to have to cover. In order to add them together, we have to first learn how to actually concatenate and combine data frames. So in the next tutorial, we'll be talking about how you go about combining data frames, whether they share an index or not, combining them on columns and all kinds of stuff. It's pretty, uh, there's a lot of options that we can do here, uh, obviously, because there's a lot of ways you would combine data frames, right? So anyways, that's what we'll be doing in this tutorial. Questions, comments below. Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and subscriptions. And until next time.